Hello. In this video, I'm going to show how to create a generic singleton. I'm going to start by uh, doing a quick review of creating a singleton. So I have a non-generic implementation that contains uh, two classes, uh, the first one being a file logger, which we'll use to represent our singleton type. And uh, the second is the logger, which will uh, provide a, a method that will manage the instance creation. So a couple of things about our file logger class. Uh, I want to make sure that our instance uh, cannot be uh, created outside of the containing assembly. And also, we might want to uh, create a uh, subclass of our file logger. So I want this to support inheritance. I do so by setting up our constructor as internal protected, which means internal or protected. Also adding here a uh, log method, which would, uh, in, in the real world, uh, write log information to a file or to a database or to the event logger, for example. And next, we'll look at the logger class, which is uh, going to provide the encapsulation of the object creation. So again, we make the object constructor uh, private here. And uh, this could also be protected if you wanted to provide inheritance off of uh, this, uh, this type. In our example, I don't need to do that. And uh, also note that I have uh, set aside here two backing fields. The first one I wanted to point out is a, uh, a lock object uh, implemented as uh, a static that will provide a, uh, a safeguard should the client be uh, attempting to create an instance of our object in a multi-threaded scenario. And uh, I also have a backing field here for our file logger. The get instance method is going to first check to make sure that the object is not already created and pass this so forward the call on to create instance, which does our double check locking, which again is a multi-threading uh, safeguard, and simply return our uh, file logger. So that's, uh, uh, again, just a little background information on one way in which a, a singleton uh, can be created in a non-generic uh, fashion. Now let's move on to our uh, generic library. Uh, I've added just a few more uh, implementation details that I need to go over before we look at the generics. And uh, so here I set up a, a file logger class that implements uh, an interface called iLogger. And the same for our other class here called event logger, which implements iLogger. So the reason why I created a, uh, uh, an interface, let's take a look at that. Our interface here just has that method called log. The reason I set this up is because our logger class uh, will be able to create any type of generic uh, singleton, but I want it constrained such that the type uh, can only be a class that implements this iLogger uh, interface. Same backing fields as before, uh, same constructor as before, same get instance implementation as before, but what is different this time is inside of the create instance uh, where we have to first uh, check to make sure that uh, we have no instances uh, already available. And the next thing that we want to do in here is, uh, because we're working with generics, we want to get the corresponding type. And this is the type information that we'll be using uh, with reflection. So that after we retrieve our uh, type instance, we're going to call this special method called getConstructors. And by default, uh, getConstructors will return all of the public constructors. But I want to make sure that there are no public constructors. So uh, if there uh, is more than, if there is one or more, then uh, I want to throw an invalid operation exception. The next thing we want to do uh, is to use the activator class and invoke its create instance method. So we're going to be creating this instance via the uh, private or uh, protected or internal, <laughs> either way, constructor. So we pass in the type information. And the second argument, very importantly, must be true. So uh, we specify it as true to create instance uh, 
using non-public constructors, uh, which is the case here. And finally, our client is uh, just for testing purposes. I set up uh, first a, a, a get instance call for our file logger. And then the next thing I do here is I want to assert that there is a, a singleton being made available to the host. So I call trace.assert here and I want to compare the addresses of the file logger and the uh, get instance call again, which will return hopefully the same address. If it uh, doesn't, we'll uh, obviously have an assertion. And uh, call my log method. And I do the same thing for event logger. Just uh, notice that it's uh, very straightforward. You can have as many of these types now as you need, as long as they implement the interface and they are uh, classes. Finally, I call event logger and invoke its log method. Let's go ahead and run this. And uh, you'll notice it worked. Okay, so we have uh, generic uh, singleton lib file logger was the first, and the generic singleton lib event logger was the second. And since it didn't throw uh, any assertion, we know that uh, this worked correctly. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank <music> you.